I want to go ahead and play this first topic and then y'all still get. that element from my career that I think st- that I think stunted me because it also painted this picture that I was already established right mm. we didn't have any we had three records recorded when we did that we didn't have any people were all these different outlets were hitting Jana up Jana Fleischman shout out to Jana yeah. um mm, shout out to Jana Fleischman like she teamwork miss teamwork make the dream work yeah she's mm. she's she's a beast that's where I got love that her from 15 years ago love that her. was a model and and people all these different outlets were hitting her up for interviews and she would ask us like you know do you want to do this like do and I'm like I don't really have anything to say I haven't recorded any music I don't know what my music sounds like I don't know when it when anything and is coming being out rebellious about the type of music and I don't know do. what so, so, and here's the thing that was her way too she, she and I was like, like I don't I don't know what to tell I don't people. know what to do. <laughs> I know they were sitting up there like. All right, all right. So, Jacory, do you know the moment that they're talking about? No, I don't. All right, all right. So, what happened was she ended up performing on stage um, in place of Alicia Keys. Oh shit! Okay. And she got a major, major look. I forgot what the uh, event um, was. Uh, I think maybe Alicia was she was maybe it was a show. I have to go back and check. But basically, Alicia Keys had this slot, so there's a highly, highly visible slot. This is when Alicia Keys was like hot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, not brand new Alicia, but like still hot Alicia, yeah. mid 2000s. I'm here, right? Alicia. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe early 2010s, but and she performed in her slot, and because of that slot, obviously highly visible, and she's a beast of an artist in terms of like singing and all that. So the look was crazy. Yeah. What happens after that? By the way, Jay Z did t- tell her to quit her job because he he was got, she was up under him and didn't um and um like Jay Z didn't actually know that she had a job. Like you just assume damn near like wait wait you got a job. He had hit her up and said like, oh yeah come out I think to this show to actually do this performance and. You're like, wait, what? She was like, yeah, I'm at my regular job. He's like, nah, you got to quit. You got to quit that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? and I, I feel that. All right, right? That does make yeah, sense, I right? Feel that, it does yeah. make sense. <laughs> so she gets this highly visible slot. She performs her ass off. And some many people are aware of the Jay-Z and the um, Beyonce-ish like, connection to vicinity, at least more industry people. And because of that visibility, but now people are like, yo, what's next? All right, what do yeah. you do? They want to talk about this artist who just performed in this highly visible slot. So she's talking about here how I have all these interviews like set or the demand for them to be set. People like Angie Martinez following her overnight. I don't know if y'all know who she is, but she's a goat in this radio world. All these interviews trying to um, be had with her. Yet she don't even know what the hell she's going to say. Got nothing out. She don't have no music out. <laughs> She doesn't have any way to capitalize off of this. I think she's, she just said in that clip, like either they had three songs possibly ready or only three songs out. I don't, I miss uh, what, what she said. But either way it goes, this brings up the, the idea of popping too early. Yeah. Now what it makes me think about? What? Going, going viral today. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Because this is pre like internet the way we have it today yeah, that or was social the viral, media. That was right? the viral of that time. That was yeah. 100% yeah. the viral of that time. So <laughs> this is why when people say, can I pop too early? This is what it looks like. Too early isn't necessarily like, oh, you should pop before one song, two songs, three songs, five songs, a uh, full album. Like it's not that specific. Because I believe you really can capitalize off of like any moment, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's more about having an infrastructure and a plan. And when you're where she was, like that's too, that's when you call too early, right? Not oh, I only recorded one song and this song happened to go viral. I believe even that is doable if you got a studio, you can get a, you know you can get that turnaround happening. Yeah. When it's too early, like way, 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 way too early, undisputedly too early is, let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you, and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brand Man Network. 
All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. When it's too early, like way, 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 way too early, undisputedly too early, is she didn't even have a vision for herself yet. Yeah. She didn't know what her sound was, right? Like, that's a problem. Like, oh, we got to record some more music. That is a problem. Yeah. Right? It's a challenge. Especially about that. Right? That's that, that's a challenge. But that is a problem, bro. Like, yeah. I don't know, even know how the fuck I'm going to sound. What am I going to say on these interviews? Because I don't have a vision for myself. So I can't give you when they ask more. I might can talk about my background because that just is what it is. Like, oh, I used to, I'm from this place and, and that place. And I went to college or whatever. Like, you could talk about that. But you can't give anybody a sense of the vision for who you are and- Honestly, many artists decide how they want to be in interviews, mm -hmm. right? But that also relates to their vision. Do I want to be bubbly, have this personality? Do I want to be laid back and chill? Because let's keep it real. Many people have both, like multiple sides of themselves. And you kind of pick what side that you want to show in your interviews at one given point of time. Yeah, so she doesn't get yeah. to think through any of this stuff. Yeah, you got the demand of the world on you right now. And that shit ain't gonna last. It's like, oh, after yeah, I got a month to figure out who I want to be, which isn't even realistic. But let's say I did that. After that month, that moment's passed. They don't want to interview you just like that. Yeah, like we're not gonna come back and say, oh yeah, that was that girl who had that one performance and one little moment. So it's such a challenge, like to like be visible and then not be able to capitalize off of it. And it makes me think about when. Tink, you you know Tink, right? Yeah, the singer. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Like, so you remember when Timbaland, <laughs> when he put out, he, he was on Breakfast Club and he played that that joint with Rick Ross and, and Tink, and he wasn't supposed to do it. And Rick Ross was upset with him. Nah, oh, nah yeah, I missed yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah. like, it was <laughs> uh, Timbaland put Tink in a, in between the rock and a hard place. <laughs> it, it, it was thick for a second. Um, but yeah, he played because he was so excited about Tink and like, yo, I got this new artist, da da da. And he even played, it, maybe it was a remix to his regular song, or maybe it was a song that came, didn't come out. I think it was more of a remix, but yeah. Yeah, because the Tink and Rick Ross song, song uh, Rick Ross song, it was hard, crazy. bro. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. hard. <laughs> and DJ Envy pulled that old school DJ trick, let me get the exclusive yeah. type. <laughs> you got to blame Timberland. You can't, like, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, like, he should have done better. But, but yeah, she basically said, she didn't take advantage. Basically, Timlin said she wasn't taking advantage of a lot of opportunities that came with him and certain visibility because she wanted to give herself space and time to mature. All right. And figure things out. And that's crazy to hear from an artist. Yeah. Who doesn't like how few people are that confident in where they're going, their own career and their ability to the point that they would turn that stuff down, especially at the age she was at that time. She was probably like 19 or 20. I might be off by a couple yeah. of years, but she was young to do that too. Yeah, but is it is it is it confidence or is it is it fear? You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times I feel like it's, it's more of the fear of like what's going to kind of come with that, knowing you're not ready. Because I, I, what makes me knowing think, you're not ready though yeah. it's one it's one thing to know you're not ready and to be afraid. I yeah. think I think there's a nuance there. Yeah, but like the, the audience doesn't know. And what what's making me think of it is um, I, I remember in like one of the business masterminds we was at when the speaker was making the argument that like if you're scaling the company, actually no, it wasn't a mastermind. It might have been a YouTube video, like an Alex Hermosa video or something. But it make he was making the argument that like if you're scaling really quickly, right, like you don't stop the scale. You just figure out how to catch up to it and just let shit break in the process. Like yes. You figure out yes. how to catch up to it, right? And so to me, it applies to this situation. It's like, do we slow this down because you as an artist aren't ready for it? Do we throw you into this shit, force you to get as ready as you can, and then learn what we learn from that, and then figure it out how to make it better the next time? You know, so like, that's why I, I become conflicted with it. Like, I think it's dope that she has the insight to be yeah. like, I don't think I'm ready. But then it's like, well, honestly, you never really will be ready because all this shit going to be new to you for at least the next couple of years, you know? All right. So that's where I call out the differences between a human product and a product to be sold. Fair. Right. Like, I think 
there is <laughs> some aspect, just even as humans, we know, like, yo, you got to get in the game at some point, period. Yeah. Right? So if it's more a fear and I'm just being afraid to get in the game, but technically you do have it in you and you are ready, that's a problem. And you have to keep things moving and stretch and adjust. Cool. But to a certain extent, with a human product, there's a certain amount of development that's just not going to happen. Yeah. All right. It's just not going to happen just because opportunities came and sped up. Because it's, if anything, I might be able to better handle the scenario right better i might now know how to handle media and experience media and see all these spaces and games and play that game better but i won't i won't be able to increase the speed in which i improve the product that's the problem yep. you know what i'm saying like yeah. i can't all of a sudden just have an experience it's like you ever heard somebody say like it'll be a great singer or whatever. They'd be like thirteen or whatever, and they were like, "Oh man!" Now when you go through some life, yeah, you're ooh, yeah. <laughs> you fall. Ooh, yeah, you got that voice, but you don't have that soul that come from that place that you can only get when you get that shit happening to you. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the type of thing that we're dealing with for artists when our business. Okay, let's say sales, because that's basically what we, what it comes down to: sales and the ability to fulfill and the product itself. Yeah, the product itself doesn't really change that much, yeah. right? You have to just figure out how do I fulfill, distribute, deliver, right? So those are different problems to solve, right? And get behind, and you and I agree. Scale, 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 scale. Now how the fuck can we fulfill this shit? Yeah. This shit. But when it comes to, and even businesses have problems. Like I had that problem with Popeyes when they did that chicken sandwich. Oh, uh, you couldn't get one? No, I got one. Oh, okay. Right, I got one, that shit was delicious. <laughs> It was delicious. <laughs> then they ran out. <laughs> the next one was suspicious. <laughs> I said, this ain't the same shit. <laughs> Y'all, and I know what happened. They dropped that thing. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to do this little chicken sandwich. We're going to have a war. Maybe it's a test or maybe it's or maybe we actually are going to come out with it. But I felt like it was a little bit of limited in its expectation. Yeah, first time around, right? Yeah. This junk goes viral. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There's lines wrapped around the building you know this is something like and this couldn't happen like a year later in COVID right yeah. <laughs> this had to be like 2019 everybody's like like this is the thing this is the talk of the town I, I can't get wish for a better scenario people are comparing it to Chick-fil-A many people saying mine is better than Chick-fil-A run out people can't get it and then what happened they had to stop mm, yeah why did they have to stop though why would you stop when like why would you stop when everything is hot when it's in high demand. Know why they had to stop? Because they had their own version of an artist that you can't speed up. The, the goddamn chicken sandwich. The goddamn chickens, <laughs> bruh. You can't make them hoes. <laughs> you can't speed up life, bruh, unless you start going to get the other stuff. The other stuff, that's going to ruin the quality too much. So now you got all these suppliers you got agreements <laughs> with already. Right? Yeah. And... Some of these suppliers are already locked down with their agreements with other people. Yeah. So what happens, eventually you find somebody and, and what? You come back. At first, I think the last time I've had it, it's improved back from, so it was great. Came right back. This ain't the same shit, bro. This tastes closer to that stuff I would eat in school. <laughs> and then now it's trending back towards the right thing, <laughs> right? You know, two years later, you know, yeah. the chickens have grown a little bit, right? But that's the problem that you that you deal with. That's <laughs> business is all sell, fulfill, sell, fulfill, sell, fulfill. So anytime you bring in that natural human living element, dog. Yeah, that, that's fair. I think about like clients we had that we helped go viral and it's that first time going viral. Like it's a lot to deal with, you know what I'm yes. saying? Yes. And uh mentally. I mean, and yeah, and even bring about the, the Bridget Kelly, like I the the difference I see versus when she went through it, like you said, like the one there was no music product. Uh, there and it's much more expensive to make music back then so it's not like you just you know go to your your bedroom that they knock out like a quick album or some shit you know, and have it ready in two weeks and then on top of that today i think the advantage that artists of today have is they can just learn how to do that shit on their socials right like you can learn how to get over a lot of the initial fears or stuff like that by just like going live and talking to your fans right you go viral today you do six live streams over the next two weeks by the end of that you'll be comfortable talking yeah. to random people you know what i'm saying like you'll yeah. you'll feel a little bit better so 
I think artists they have more outlets to get the experience faster, whether yeah. they look at it that way or not. Mm, so that's why I, I would say that. even in that, it's like, yeah, the there's that human element of, of like this is just experiences and you know, it probably takes us all like a good one to three months after having the experience to really process and learn how to deal with it. That's that's what I think. But my argument is you are gonna go through that shit one way or another, either now <laughs> or shit with music, maybe never again. You know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah. it's, so yeah. it's so never it's do again. I not go through the experience because I feel like I'm not ready? And like you said with Tink, like, do I feel confident enough in myself to think, like, I'm going to get this opportunity again in a year, two years from now, three years from now? Or do you say, fuck it, I'm just going to deal with it. Maybe my mental and physical health declines a little bit, but I know I just got to make it through X amount of period and then learn from what I learned from it. You know what I'm saying? Move how I can move after it. And I, at least I don't have to risk this never happening again. At least I can say I went through it. And so yeah. I feel like those are the options you come down to when something like that happens, I understand the the first option. I feel like everyone should do the second option. <laughs> I I think from what I understand and saw, I think in Tink's situation, I can see why it made sense to go her route. Um, Bridget Kelly's situation, I'd probably, based on how things are wrong, I'd probably just run it up. In that moment, so right? I'm saying. So, and, and actually, real quick too. Yeah. Back then, you could get away for a, a with like one single for a longer period of time. You could, yeah. You could. So she could just knocked out one and been good for like six months. You know what yeah, at least. <laughs> yeah. See, I think the problem though still therein lies. What you figure out is is that gift that comes with artists that also creates that problem. Yeah. Right, and then you have to make a decision, a business decision. I know that you don't know who you are yet because I don't think it was about fear of speaking with people and mental health because that conversation wasn't as trendy right now. Even that was there, it wouldn't have been like a thought, yeah, right? Yeah. I think it was largely, literally, but what do I talk about? Yeah, what do I say? I don't have any, it, I don't have a product. Yeah. That's, <laughs> like that's a whole nother problem. Yeah. Uh, we talk about fulfillment and then having issues and scaling. I don't even have a product yet. I don't know who I am. I don't. I haven't created enough of it. And then now you talk about blowing up because you did a feature, because you did a song. Like we have artists who have unfinished songs blow up, right? Or they have a teaser uh, or a cover blow up, right? And now you got to figure out how do I finish that out? An unfinished song is good because it's like, oh, at least all I got to do is finish the song. Yeah. Right? Now, how fast you can do that is a problem, like, or not. But the thing that comes with artists, man, is do you are you comfortable with thinking on a longer time span and saying, hey, I'm a pop in this specific space that I don't necessarily want to do for my career. Maybe I want to incorporate some rock neo soul elements. That was something that she was talking about into my stuff and figure out how to fuse them cleanly. But Right now, this is some straight Alicia Keys shit, mm -hmm. right? I'm in that spot and coming up down that path, and I'm just going to go as big as I can down that path. And then, hey, man, I'm rich. I'm winning. I got a fan base. You know, Things are going good. Then I'm going to try to hit them with this fusion and figure myself out and see if I can take them there. That's not a bad look. That's actually yeah. oftentimes the best way to do it like the most the highest probability of taking something unique and introducing it to a marketplace especially music is that route right yeah that's what all the uh, soundcloud rappers did <laughs> all, all of them all of the biggest ones bro that's what they did they capped in that space and then as soon as they got the bass they all flipped the different shit exactly yeah but many artists aren't comfortable with that idea yeah right it makes it maybe feel like more of a job or creatively restricting, which oftentimes a job might do for them. If it's not just whatever I want and where I whatever I'm feeling and the inspiration that comes from it. Right. That, but that is the job of the industry. You are an entertainer. Yeah. Right. And it is a job itself. So I get that, that you might want to delay everything based on the development of yourself and a sound and it being perfect. So I, and I, so I could 100% get that route. But on the side of understanding how difficult it is to get a moment, 
Exactly. A for real moment. Exactly. Momentum. That shit that you cannot buy. I always tell artists you cannot buy momentum. Record labels cannot buy momentum. No, that's why they find momentum <laughs> and then try to get ownership of that momentum. Yeah. Because I could put a mill behind something and it could not stick. Yeah. I can't force it. I can inc- I can increase the likelihood by putting more money into it, more resources. But if it don't go, it don't go. That's the thing about this music shit. So understanding that, how hard that is to do, yeah, I would probably try to advise personally. Yeah. Let's stick with this thing, all right, and just cap and get your visibility. And look, at, at, at worst, you made some money and you dig. You know, you got some success. Yeah, you got a cool story you know to tell I mean? your friends and family. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Remember that time I was viral yeah. for like five months? You know that clip <laughs> when um where Ray Daniels was like, hey, nigga, if you want to rap, then rap. Yeah. Like, this is business. This is the business. But if you want to rap, go on a motherfucking corner, then rap. Like, that whole thing. Yeah. Right? Now, I look at it that way, too. Right? If you want to be in this music business, right, just the business of things, of course, ideally, you have your perfect sound that you want for yourself. And then you can capitalize off of that. That's the artist ideal situation. Exploit who you are to the 100%. But the other situation is, look, if you really are doing this as an artist artist and it's because you want to do do it in that way, maybe you just creating music for yourself and putting it, you know, on the <laughs> on the USB drive, the terror, <laughs> like whatever that is. That should be good, right? Or you can perform for small audiences or you build this big fan base and it's not going to hit on a pop scale or your main fan base, but, you know, you want to do this intimate show, you can still get that off. Yeah. Right? Matter of fact, you have more space to get that off because you have a, you know, a better life, right? You have more freedom (laughs) in your life, right? But it comes from you doing this thing. So sometimes my personal issue that comes with artists, and this goes from, either popping with a sound that's not yours or not the ideal sound like that you want to be at. I, I get like not going like, oh, I'm going to go country even though I'm a hip hop artist. And, and take, I get that type of like, extremity, but not popping, whether it's popping with an imperfect sound by your um, nature or not becoming a YouTuber or uh, any kind of content creator popping in any kind of way. Mm-hmm. My issue with that is right now your alternative is this job that you hate. What is your other path? I don't understand, like, well, why don't I at least have some level of freedom? Especially like, you're, oh, you're funny. People love, like, DC Young Fly is one of those dudes. He can rap and sing his ass off. I, I was forget he might. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, he what? was doing but, that yeah. early yeah. on, but yeah. oh, this music got popping. I mean, not this music, this comedy. Uh, this comedy got popping. You know, and maybe the way things are going, maybe the full breadth of the music isn't meant for him. You know what I mean? Like, God meant this comedy thing for him. Or maybe he brings it back and he does something official. Jamie Foxx was one of those dudes. Yeah. Always wanted yeah. to do, like, the music was his first first. But acting worked out. Acting worked out the yeah. way it is. And he got it, get it how you live. And I gave him resources and things. He would strategically throw all them parties with Kanye and Jay-Z and Missy, all them stories he tells, like, and bring all those people in around and had a studio in his house and try to get some of them to record with him and get, do a little experience. He would strategically do that. And that he, could, and he could only do that because of his resources that he got mm-hmm. from being an actor, the clout he got from being an actor and comedian, and and then worked himself way uh, back into music yeah. that way. Yeah. Right? And I, his music career still isn't technically anywhere near his acting career or the height of what his comedy is is not but yeah. it's so high yeah, yeah that, and that's what yeah. made jamie fox like one of the like just i'm like a jamie got his, bro. Yeah, that's like... that's what makes him a fucking alien because his music <laughs> career is very very high <laughs> on a general scale matter of fact let's just to know let's see what his monthly listeners are bro, i feel like that'd be interesting i feel like it's at least seven million you think at least seven million at least seven yeah that's he got he got some hits yeah that's that's a legit number let's see modify uh, Jamie, is he popping up? Let me know when he pops up. Oh, there we go. Jamie has uh, 3.9. 3.9. Okay. No. But when's the last time he dropped something? She made like, what, three years ago? Like, man? seriously. Three, three, four years ago? Maybe. And, and we know how little time he's had. He's had like that hot, hot moment already. So, yeah, Slow Jam, City Jewelers, Blame It. Yeah, so, I mean, streams is Blame It. Oh, you know what? 
this don't count though because his shit was before streaming. streaming yeah exactly. yeah so this really don't even count to have 3.9 and not really even have a moment and push and drop shit after streaming like that and that shit coming from probably majority of these three songs that's, that's crazy yeah, that's yeah. beautiful so his numbers yeah. are still stupid yeah his numbers are, are, are still stupid but you have to judge it on that scale this is what pre-streaming when you gotta look in terms of looking at it seriously um but yeah okay i see he dropped something in relation to that movie i haven't watched that vampire movie yet have you have you watched it no man my uh my grandma told me it wasn't that great and i I, I trust my grandmother's opinion when it comes to movies it looks like a good bad movie or like a like you know you put that shit on during the daytime while you like i don't know cooking or (laughs) or just doing something else at the same time but but yeah the moments are so hard to come by you gotta cap right when they come yeah, like how many how many times yeah. have we we seen that with clients where we were like we wish you would just power through this shit. Yes, I can think of at least like five different instances. Yep, and that becomes my thing with it is like I was saying earlier, all of this is new, so it's going to be a long time before you experience these things and and really feel comfortable with it. And so it's I look at it like, do you are you okay with learning on the fly? Because I think a lot of times artists kind of have this idea in their head where it's like, hey, like I, I need to be perfect. I need to be this way mm-hmm. for me to really take advantage of it. But it's like, one, you don't know if that shit, that shit's perfect to you, but you don't know if it's going to hit the way you, you need to hit. And then yeah. two, bro, just figure this shit out now. And if you're right, then you'll be better for the situation you're planning on. And if you're wrong and you fall out the game, then it didn't matter anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you were, you, Either way, yeah. it didn't matter. You got a cool story to tell and you, you can kind of keep it pushing. Yeah. And so that becomes my thing with it because whenever we have clients say that to us, that will always be the perspective that comes like, oh, like this is cool. I'm having this moment. Let me get this right before we really cap. And we're like, Man. when is that gonna happen? Oh, it should be about a month. Like a month? Psh. Yeah. But you might have five days, to be honest with you. you exactly. Know what I'm <laughs> like Facts. you might have five days max. A week from now, Kanye gonna say some shit. The media <laughs> gonna turn that way. And just like that, we don't forget about you and don't care anymore. But I the the last thing I'll say on that is still it requires discernment. And this is what yeah. What, why the value of like a great manager and just team around you comes in handy because how do you identify that moment that you can't get, that you can't buy versus this is just an opportunity, right? Because all the artists that we know, successful and unsuccessful, have probably turned something down. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right? And, and the very, very successful have turned many things down. So yeah. it's not like you're eating up every single opportunity that comes and say, oh, I'll never get this opportunity again. Timing is it really matters, and maybe I need to do it not off of this random thing that just popped because of my relationship. I need to do it because I'm about to come out with a project and bring attention to it, right? So I'm not going to do this radio interview this week. I'm going to do it six months from now when I actually have something to talk about. Like little things like that, they matter. And figuring and being able to discern is this a moment moment or is this yeah, like I said, I guess an opportunity. That's the the, the best way. But yeah. um, yeah. But shit, one of them, so real quick, one of the uh, coldest quotes I heard on something like that was like, one of the hardest things about growing as a business is saying no to things that you know could be a good look. Oh hell yeah! You know what I'm saying? You're like, yep. damn, this shit could, this shit here, but this is moving like this for me. I gotta, I gotta let it go, bro. That's where people mess up, right? Because it's like it's that effort di- distribution and understanding. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, I could go over here and make this quick hundred k faster than I've made 100K before, or I can take that same effort and it might take two times as long and make a meal, Mm -hmm. right? An additional meal just in that same space. Mm -hmm. But most people don't have the discipline and long-term thinking to be able to get themselves from like hustle, 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 hustle. Oh, there's an op, oh, there's an op, oh, there's an op. But a lot of that comes from lack of faith in themselves. Like it's lack of faith or lack of lack of discipline, Lack of or understanding how much work that shit really takes. Understanding that yeah. it actually takes to mm-hmm. hit that level, mm-hmm. right? And now that energy you just put over there just extended the time span for this main space that you just left to make that money. Yeah. But and you keep on going back over there because you're like, oh, I didn't do it yet. Oh, I didn't do it yet. And now you might need to just completely miss that window to ever hit that next level in that first thing you just left because it's taking too long or you beating yourself into like lack of stamina so yeah that it's again this is why it 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 is so advantageous to have great advisors and 
like people around you because how do you know that and recognize that when there's not the person around that can tell you that yeah and it's your right? first time going through and, it and it's your first time going yeah. through it you don't click you you can't sniff with that you know it's, it's, this is part of why we had some problems with like college students working for us remember i was just like oh, yeah. hey bro these people don't live too much life and right now it's co- i mean they haven't lived enough it's coming easy and they and when we're in that moment like they don't understand Nigga, you can't just make these moments. Yeah. Like, I need you to work, bruh. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you up there, oh, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to stomp the yard, and then I'm going to, like, do this, and I'm going to go on my dates, and all that, da, da, da. You don't understand, though. No, this is double down time, because once we get to that next level, we're on that next level. And then sometimes it's five levels, ten levels that you can go up in that moment. And once you're there, you're there. Yeah. So you put in that work, you might, shit, not go to sleep for a couple of weeks or whatever, you know? But then once you're there, you're there. It's not going to wait on you. Yeah. You know? So that's, again, that's part of you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this clip, then you should watch the full episode of No Labels Necessary that it came from. And it's going to really blow your mind. Check this clip right here.